right, fans, and welcome into another episode of Dr. Gang Green Presents. Tonight's movie is a star-studded affair with Darren McGavin, who you guys know best as the old man from the holiday classic A Christmas Story, as a thieving scoundrel out to pilfer a piece of pottery from a little old lady. It also stars Carolyn Jones as his girlfriend. Carolyn, you'll know best as Morticia from the original Adams Family TV show. See if you can spot her in this one. She's got a totally different look. We'll go ahead and get to tonight's movie now. This is The Cheney Vase. I don't intend to discuss it any further. I want you to leave the museum this afternoon. Mr. Coulter, the work I did here as your assistant could have been done by a reasonably intelligent child. Leaving won't be exactly a hardship. However, you're rather conveniently forgetting my severance pay. If you want to make an issue with the money, Lyle, I'll be glad to take it up with the board. I'm prepared to go completely into your record during the three months you've been here. Your inability to arrive even approximately on time. The four days off last month with no reason whatsoever. It was spring, Mr. Coulson, though I doubt whether you were aware of that. I want you out of this building by three o'clock. Yes, sir. How did it go, Lyle? It went, and so shall I. Oh, no. What are you going to do? You got me this job. You got any other ideas? Let me go. Mr. Endicott? Miss Cheney, no one told me you were in the museum. And Francis and I just arrived. Well, now, aren't you looking chipper, if I may say so? Well, of course you may say so. Everyone lies to me and spoils me. I'd be rather put out if they didn't. But the only thing chipper about my appearance is perhaps my suit. And if you'd known me longer, Mr. Endicott, you'd know that that's almost as old as you are. <laughs> well, it's still very handsome, and so is its owner. But now, look here, doesn't this add a touch of color? Hmm? Well, no. There we go. It's very thoughtful of you, Mr. Endicott. Thank now, you. Now, you're not going to run off with one of the museum's treasures in that box, are you? <laughs> no, this is, this is my own last little effort. Francis, why don't you run along and do your errands? I shall need you for a while. Well, now, you know, it's, it's really very good. Yes, you, you know, you've cut this in here beautifully. Yeah. Well, of course, it's only a hobby, but at least no one can say that I completely waste my time rattling around in that old house out in the country. Oh, there you are, Herbert. Good afternoon, Martha. What a nice surprise. I didn't expect you to Wednesday. Well, it was the only day I could come. Have you taken care of that matter as I asked you to? Oh, yes, I'll uh, take care of that immediately, Mr. Cawthorn. Well, Miss Cheney, it was so nice to see you again. Goodbye, Mr. Endicott. Goodbye. Goodbye. Well, what did you want to see me about? Well, Martha, I'm leaving for the coast. Oh, are you really? Uh-huh. Day after tomorrow. Martha, it would be a wonderful send-off for my trip if I could inform the Board of Trustees that at long last, I've arranged to purchase the Cheney vase. Oh, no, you're not still at it. No, <laughs> Herbert. You know I could never sell it. It was the last thing of my father's, and I'm going to keep it as long as I live. Oh, and that's going to be a long, long time. But, Martha, you always promised. No, Herbert. That's fine. Well, so you're leaving for the coast? Mm -hmm. Well, Francis is leaving me, too. So I have to manage without Francis. And this will probably be my last visit for a while. So, act like a curator. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to see those Chinese figurines. No explanation, no nothing. He just fired you. Oh, darling, I'm sick. What is it with that? Do we just have the unlucky touch? Other people get married and save money and have babies and think that this is the best of all possible worlds. Why not just once? Just once can something work out right for me. 
Will they let you stay in your apartment till I get my check? I'm not going to take any more money from you. Take a letter, Miss Waring. What? A recommendation. At least you can type one, I think, even if our distinguished curator won't feel obliged to. What will I say? Just write a nice, kind, enthusiastic letter. Lyle Endicott worked here at the Manhattan Museum of Art as my assistant until uh, uh, May 12th. During which time, he turned out to be a very dependable worker. I hope you don't mind my coming to you. Well, but you see, I'm in no position financially to engage someone like you. Well, there could be other compensations in my case. You see, I could continue my research here in your wonderful library. Oh, yeah, may I? Oh, thank you, Mr. Endicott. Oh, call me Lyle. Well, I... Well, now, look, if I'm going to be taking care of you, you can hardly go around calling me Mr. now, can you? <laughs> it's very kind of you and Herbert to think of me. But you know that when Francis leaves, there'll be just Bella the cook. And I'm helpless. Since my illness last year, I, I can't get around at all. Well, then you do need a man around the house. Now, don't you? Hmm? <laughs> <laughs> well, would you be willing to put it on a trial basis? Say, one month? Oh, <laughs> of course. Well, I know that I won't change my mind. Well, then let's seal the bargain. Lyle. Like another cup of tea, dear? Sitting here gossiping with you isn't going to get any work done. And I ought to have been in my studio an hour ago. Oh, well, we certainly can't let talent go to waste now, can we? Here we go. We. Oh, no. <laughs> oh, Lyle. There we go. Oh, no. Oh, please. Oh. oh. <laughs> Now, you go right on upstairs then, and uh, get to work, and I'll make all the arrangements about lunch. Oh, now, you're not supposed to bother about things like that. Well, why not? I enjoy doing things for you. <laughs> there we go. Oh, no. Put those somewhere. I'll answer them later. Okay. Bella, would you clear up Miss Cheney's tea things, please? Yes, sir. But, Bella, it isn't important one cup. And you so rarely break anything. Miss Cheney, I didn't break it. Now, as Mr. Endicott said, it wasn't broken when I had my tea from it, and you're the only one who's touched the tray since. Well, if you have one of Miss Cheney's cups, there's no harm in admitting it. But don't try to blame someone else. Are you calling me a liar, sir? I'm merely saying that when one is as old as you are, Bella, and is prone to breaking Bella, things. I know you're tired. Now, you've had too much to do since Francis left. So, why don't you go and lie down for a little while? Never thought the time would come. You wouldn't believe me, Miss Cheney. I can see I'm not wanted in this house. Bella, wait. Bella. I'm afraid we hurt her feelings. I hated having to worry you about this, but... Well, some of the things that have gone on lately... Oh, Bella has been with me for 18, well, almost 20 years. I. I couldn't possibly do without her. I hope she'll stay with me as long as I live. I just thought perhaps, well, she might need a little vacation. 
Why don't you tell her to take a couple of weeks off? I'm sure I can take care of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, so uh, this is where the artist creates her masterpiece. Hmm? Oh, well, it's a good place for work. It's quiet, it's soundproof. When the elevator's downstairs, I feel cut off from the rest of the world. You keep the vase up here? What vase? With the vase. There's only one, isn't there? I don't want to talk about... I don't want to talk about it. Everybody's always asking me about it. I thought you'd be different from the rest, Well, It seems a shame to keep such a beautiful work of art hidden away when no one can appreciate it. It is my vase and I will do what I like with it. Everybody is always telling me what I have to do. Martha, what's the matter? Can I help you? I think if you don't mind, Lyle, I'd like to be alone for a while, please. And just rest quietly. Oh, no. No, I wouldn't think of leaving you now. You need someone to take care of you. Hope you're enjoying the Cheney vase. Be sure and stay planted during these commercials. What year did the Adams Family TV series premiere? Answer after these messages. Hey! What do you think you're doing? Did you know that recycling just one soda can power a television for up to three hours? Not to mention that aluminum can be recycled an unlimited number of times. Always be sure to place your cans in a recyclable container. Remember, you can make a difference. What year did the Adams Family TV series premiere? Answer, September 18, 1964. Welcome back to Dr. Gang Green Presents. In tonight's episode, Darren McGavin stars as a creepy caretaker and Carolyn Jones stars as his girlfriend. And a blonde? Ooh la la. Tish, that's French. <laughs> now this was made in 1955 for an episode of the Alfred Hitchcock Presents TV series. These two would also team up 20 years later for an episode of one of my favorite shows, Cole Shack, The Night Stalker. And speaking of reteaming, that's actress Patricia Collins, who plays Martha Cheney in tonight's episode. It's her second go-around with Hitchcock. She also starred in the 1946 Hitch film, Shadow of a Doubt. Now back to the movie. But I do worry. It's wrong. Why is it wrong? She's got that vase hidden away somewhere. What good's it doing her? I know, Lyle, but she's a helpless old woman. I do wish you'd give up the idea. Maybe Kothar might know where it is. I'm sure he doesn't. Are you positive he doesn't? Yes. Well, she's got it hidden away in that house somewhere. I may have to strangle her, but I'll get it. Oh. <laughs> Darling? Hmm? Who's Max Weisenweber? He's one of the most important art collectors in Europe. He's written the museum a couple of times. Cother seems to think he's a bit shady. Oh? Why do you ask? And if it is a genuine Cheney vase, I may be induced to go as high as 45,000 payable in dollars or marks at Frankfurt. Think of what we could do with all that money. We could go to Europe, we could have cars, clothes. Where's the book with the picture of the vase in it? Yeah. The Cheney vase is comparatively small, being eight inches high, made of porous sodafine. It bears a simple crimson design on a lustrous natural background. It was discovered by the archaeologist William Cheney in 1881. What now? I think you might start learning German and arrange about your passport. I think we ought to deliver it to that uh, very nice Mr. Reisenweber in person.
Who's that? Well, I figured you'd have been up here for such a time, maybe a cup of tea would taste good. Nobody told me. I just figured. Well, now that's very... That's very kind. Put it on the table. I... I... I don't remember your name, my dear. Ruby Boynton. Ruby. Where is Mr. Endicott? Oh, I don't know. Downstairs somewhere, I guess. Ruby. I want you to help me. I've got to get out of here and he won't let me. He won't let me see anyone. He's done something to the telephone and I can't call anyone. You've got to help me. Now, this is to my attorney. I want you to take it and make sure that he gets it. Will you please? Please. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Well, allow me, dear. Why didn't you ring? Well, I don't think I can get what I want in this house anymore. Oh, Martha. You know that everything I do here is for you. Why, well, I feel like almost one of the family. Lila, hmm? this arrangement of ours, it hasn't worked out. I want you to go. Well, Martha, I'd feel guilty if I left you now. Well, you know you're not yourself. You're not responsible. Well, I know I haven't been myself recently. But I'm beginning to see everything very clearly now. Well, how can you say that, Martha? When you have such delusions. When you can write such fantastic letters like this. Martha. Really. Like our little pottery tale, you've got some time to kill while we watch these commercials. What was the name of Morticia's pet plant on the Adams Family TV series? Answer after these messages. It's summertime and things are heating up, so when you go out, it's important to drink plenty of fluids. <laughs> but did you know that single use plastic bottles account for over 5 billion tons of litter each year? What's worse, they don't decompose and will still be sitting in landfills thousands of years from now. Do your part by using reusable containers and drinking from taps and fountains. And if you do use plastic bottles, be sure and place them in a recycle bin. So let's put a cap on litter and go green with Dr. Game Green. What was the name of Morticia's pet plant on the Adams Family TV series? Answer, Cleopatra, an African strangler plant. Hey, welcome back. I was just looking through my collection of pottery and vases here to see if I might find something that could earn me a few bucks. <laughs> uh, sadly, Uncle Mortimer didn't leave much fine art here on Shackle Island when he passed away. Well, unless you count that Billy the Big Mouth Bass. <sighs> well, we'll go ahead and get you guys back into tonight's movie while I search the catacombs for untold treasure. some bad news. I think our little scheme's down the drain. The man from a bank is just here, and it seems like the Cheney vase is in the safe deposit box down there. Well, good evening, darling. How about a drink? I've had a bad day. Why can't just once, just once, something work out right for us? Uh, and now she says she needs a rest, and she wants to go off somewhere with me for a month. Where are you going? Well, his sister's got a place up in Maine. I don't know, we'll be stuck up there in the North Woods with no telephone, or I won't even be Stop able to... Stop it, Lyle. I'm sick to death of your lying and sick of whatever you're doing to that poor woman. What are you talking about? 
When you made application for your passport, you gave the museum as your business address. I did a little checking, and suddenly everything began to fall into place. The way you've been avoiding me. That cock and bull story about the vase being in a bank somewhere. And now you're going off to Maine. All right, I'll level with you. You're right, I do consider you and your morality excess baggage. But since I'm off to Frankfurt tonight at 8.30... What? Oh, yeah. It's been delightful, Pamela, every minute of it. I just have time to go over and pick up the little vase from Miss Cheney's and be off. And I wouldn't go to the priest if I were you. That letter of recommendation you wrote implicates you just as much as me. Hello? Yes, Mr. Colfer. I'm at the station. I hate to bother you, but I have a mountain of work. I wanted to come around to the museum tomorrow, even though it is Saturday. Yes. Yes, I think so. Fine. I'll tell you about the trip tomorrow. Mr. Coulter, go to Mrs. Cheney's at once. It's important. He'll be there by six. You haven't got time. It's almost five now. It'll take him an hour to get there from the station. I'll still have time. Try to make me tell you which one it is. I'm a poor, deluded old woman, probably mad, you know. I wouldn't be able to tell one from the other. You know, they're really rather good, those copies. I'd probably be able to sell them for a great deal of money. Well, how about that? Good old Grandma Cheney got him in the end. Darren McGavin knew he was caught. You could see it in his face. It was like he was saying, Oh, fudge. <laughs> and I can't believe we got through one entire episode without breaking a vase. I mean, they're so fragile. <laughs> well, that about wraps it up for this week, Fright fans. Until next time, be sure and join us back here in the lab and stay mad.